welcome to Cat the Minion YouTube channel. My name is Teresa, but you can call me Cat. I'm doing a a bi-weekly uh, astrology check-in reading here, and uh, I've decided today to do what's essentially just a dog pile. I've got 48 cards uh, from these 11 different decks. Uh, just randomly chucked them off of there, messed them around a bit, and stuck them in a heap. So I'm going to pull them off the top of the pile and read them that way. We're going to get three cards. It's going to be like a tell me a story, and then I'm going to get um, like an advice card for afterwards. So let me show you what decks I'm using today. I've got the Lover's Oracle. It's these guys right here. Heart-shaped deck. And oh, I've got the brand new to me, also the Gilded Reverie Lenormand deck. And I'm probably going to be checking the book just to make sure I'm doing them right because I'm not used to the Lenormand system. <clears throat> I've got the Mini Rider Weight, my music deck that I made for myself. I've got my Twin Flame Pinnacle deck, and if you're not a Twin Flame and you get one of these cards, that's fine. They're just going to either have a DF or a DM on them, and that just means that it's relating to masculine or feminine energy. And everybody has it, uh, so that's that can be applied thusly. I have the Lucy Cavendish Blessings deck, the Thoth deck, the Radley Valentine Angel Tarot deck. This is my combined deck of two playing card decks. It's Historical Fashion and Tim Burton. <clears throat> I have the Work Your Late Oracle and the Aquarian Tarot. So we're just into Gemini, so we're gonna start with Gemini and then we're going to processionally go backwards. Okay. So we're reading for Gemini right now, ruled by Mercury and is a, it's a air sign. Over here, actually, it's too stretchy. Too stretchy, Ricci. One, two, three, and four. All right. I think that's better. All right. Mm -mm. So, from the dog pile, we have the King of Swords. So, we have an air sign for Gemini already. And from the Lenormand deck, we have the man, number 28, with an ace of, cu of cups on there. So I'm going to suggest that this is the king of swords hanging out in his throne room, feeling in his feels. And we have the six of cups. Okay. Ace and six at seven, that's seven of cups, that's sort of uh, distracted. But I also see these cards <clears throat> sort of facing. Like he, he wants to be clear of thought, but he's stuck in this idea of the past of dealing with his inner feminine and also a feminine energy that's exterior. And, and also notice that we have Gemini and then we have a card with twins on it as well. So Gemini, 
air ruled by Mercury. And we have a lot of this energy right now. A lot, and uh, if you haven't, I would suggest checking out my energy reports playlist for that Gemini reading on the lover's card. Cards plural. Six of Cups is the sun in Scorpio. So we have sort of like, it's like illumination of the past. Right? I want to put the past behind me and have clear thoughts, but I'm tied up emotionally. Ace of Cups is the fall in water energy. But I want to read the man just to see what it says, because again, this is a brand new system for me. There's actually two man cards in that deck, and that's the traditional one. 28. So it says it, it, it's supposed to just be indicating the, the reader, the, a male subject of the reading, or a male partner of the, the querent. But I think here it's saying like this man is the king of swords because the king of swords usually think, oh, he's, you know, he's balanced in his thoughts. He's, he knows what he's about. He's clear headed. He's got his intuition locked in. He's got a clear perspective. He's looking at the bigger picture. But here it's like, you know, he might be outwardly appearing, but this man, this king, has some emotional stuff going on. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so it says it speaks of waiting, of patience, of a quiet endurance. There's a sensitivity to the scene that communicates the nature of romance. Okay, so he's... I just heard, um, like, looking for love in all the wrong places, but I got the buckwheat version, so it's Wookin Panab. So, thanks, Eddie Murphy. Ahem. All right. Yeah, so he's, he's, uh, it's like he's waiting for his love to come back around, even though he's behaving in a way that's, you know, outwardly calm, cool, collected, and balanced. He's a little bit forlorn here. So let's see what the aftermath is here. We have two of fire. You've come into your own, new partnerships or contracts, continue to move forward. Okay. Two of Wands, Mars in Aries. Notice this card has two male figures on it. So we get an Eight Wands, that's communication, something quickly happening, or eight cups which is walking away from something that that isn't really helping you anymore it's like cutting the ties but it's usually also a choice now i do see two here and two and i see eight here and and at this point this king of swords needs to use his trust his gut and understand that he can either that he can either, well, I don't want to say either or, it's like he needs to make a choice to move forward and leave the past in the past. And it's like this ideal of feminine interaction isn't, like, this uh, fantasy isn't what reality is and in that way it's like you need to move forward in an energy that's more aligned with your inner self and not with um, shades of the past. Let's see.
Okay, I see what it is. It's, there's... Pivot. Give me a second. Oh, the Hanged Man. Sixteen, the Tower. Fifteen, the Devil. It's, it's a, an almost unhealthy attachment to a prior relationship, and uh, some of the issue is that uh, it's like there's there's no closure. And it's like, it's almost like the Gemini is stuck in this uh, love sickness of something in the past until Mercury retrograde comes around and he's able to face the past. So it's like I get this like I'm looking through you energy like this is a mask that he's wearing like just kidding I'm the king of swords nothing to see here folks and the only way to resolve this is like instead of obsessing about feelings is to move into a more natural energy right it says you've come into your own and i don't want to say that the if a masculine energy shouldn't have feelings it's to say that you're you're you need to be balanced you shouldn't have two feminines on a card and two masculines on a card it should be one of each on each card and that's what needs to be resolved and and it's like instead of putting on a mask, you need to actually look in the mirror. Okay, so I hope that was helpful and relevant. And we're going to go to <sighs> Taurus. Earth sign ruled by Venus. And I need water because it's really hot today. So for Taurus, I have one, a two, a three, and a wrap-up card advice. Okay. So Venus and Earth. Alright, so we have a stork card. No, it's inverted. And we have Queen of Cups energy with a 17. So sort of like, I think, I, f I think this is like a building up of things, like taking care of business kind of card, but I'll have to check. But definitely with that Queen of Cups inverted energy there, it's Gemini and Cancer with water in water energy. And we have, um... Mm, turbulent turbulent emotional content for Taurus now Venus is in retrograde I think which might be affecting Taurus a little bit there mm. but I do also sense air even though it's Gemini, Venus also rules Libra. So it's like a foamy, frothing, roiling, emotional 
situation. And now we have the Queen of Cups upright with the song Fields of Gold. And I feel and the song is sort of like a reminiscing kind of a song. The Eight of Pentacles inverted with an exterior feminine and an inner feminine. Now I did have there is Gemini energy in here with the Queen of Cups. Gemini and Cancer. It's not to say she's two faced. Does that come out inverted or upright? Oh, uh, I don't remember. I think it was this way. Okay, it's supposed to be upright. Oh, that's an easy way to do that. I just heard she works hard for the money. Eight of Pentacles. The sun in Virgo. Okay. So I don't think it fields of gold that's like late in the summer. So that would be like that. Now I want to see what the stork card is doing because I am still very new to this Lenormand deck and system. Having never encountered it in practice personally before. With movements, upgrades, and improvements, that's work, I bring spring and the change of seasons. Sometimes my symbol stands for a new family addition or simply a new state of evolution. It can be your move or your next promotion. Okay, so it, there is a sense of predictability, though it can bring change. Returns home like clockwork to the same nest every year. Queen of Cups is not returning to the same nest. She's worked on herself and is now in a lot better place emotionally. All right, so that has to do with feminine energy and it can be the inner feminine or the exterior feminine or any energy that's uh, more creative and outside of the box than linear and practical, right? I working I thought outside of the box I go from Queen which can be a 1 or a 13 so we have this idea of inner transformation right so in an emotional way and then I have 1 and 8 that's 9 that's 9 of cups all like I mean 9 of pentacles that's like all the single ladies card but it's also some like a feminine energy that's built up her own stuff and then the queen is upright having fully transformed and now she's glowing All right let's see what this other card here is okay i don't know how that's that came out so i also i feel like it the like this change has come about like the worm has turned and then we get this victory card here six of wands jupiter and leo and interestingly is when i when i looked over here if we took the cup suit and made this nine of cups for emotional contentment that's also jupiter energy so i feel like the so i 
forgot my timing on the thing and it ended. So I was saying um, the nine, if this, if this is nine cups, that's Jupiter energy. And then um, this Jupiter in Leo energy to me suggests the month of July and the summer and there was eight of cup no eight of pentacles is the sun in Virgo so that's also that summertime energy of uh, you planted the seeds and they're growing and it's harvest time and it's also this like summer side of life energy like I'm, I'm no longer out in the cold. I'm warm. I'm confident. I'm, I'm feeling free. It's like vacation time kind of, you know, like, like all of my ducks are in a row. Now, when I went to turn the camera back on and readjust the focus, I picked up this Aquarian Tarot deck to turn it over and check and it's the Nine of Cups. So I thought that was kind of funny um, when I noticed that if I hadn't uh, lost my little segment there. Um, so that's that's it for Taurus and we're gonna go on to <clears throat> Aries. So we have fire sign ruled by the planet Mars. Now one thing I was thinking about um, in relation to Mars is that it's not always uh, like immature, warring, distorted masculine energy. Um, I, like the god of war doesn't have to be a douche all the time. Right? Think about um, like the art of war. There's a lot of psychology going on about the dirtier, grittier things in life. It's um, understanding like primal survival instincts. You know, there's a bit of, there's philosophy, there's psychology involved. You know, what is, what is negotiations? What is understanding somebody who's different than you? So there's that energy involved in, in Mars and not just this constant butting heads. And I think that's important to clarify. All right, so let's get, I got one, a two, a three, and a card to wrap up. So we start with the Eon inverted in the Thoth deck. This is judgment. We have a little kid here in a power position trying to call on protection from his ancestors. We have the sky goddess Newt here and Horus on his throne. And we have these sort of embryonic people down here in the underworld, like souls that are waiting to come into existence. But this judgment card is inverted. Look how this looks like a bowl. It's like, um, in the womb of the earth, entombed, like trapped in the material world, kind of. Uh, um, so this is fire and Pluto. And what did I say? But trapped in the underworld, Pluto being the ruler of Hades or the uh, Roman name for Hades. And then we have two cards from my Twin Flame deck here. So let's see what we have. We have the Jack of Wands. That's more fire related to the masculine energy, but it's inverted. And that could be the page or the knight. It might be the page, though, because we have this kind of womb underworld energy and fire. And then we have feminine energy in this Jack of Pentacles. So we have a duality here. This is earth with feminine energy, but it's upright. And then we have fire and masculine energy inverted. 
but the the masculine being inverted with the the eon inverted um, suggests that they're so they're like matchy matchy. But I see twenty, and I see uh, this is eleven or one, or if it's a, the knight, it would be the hanged man, a twelve or a one. But I th I think these are pages. Like turn the page. Um, especially because one is up and one is down. Turn the page. Bob Seeger or something. I don't remember. Steve Miller, maybe. Um, so I, I see 20 and I see 1. 21, the, my world has been turned upside down. Masculine energy, like, what the hell is going on here? Like, what in the world? What in tarnation? What in the hell? What in the Sam Hill? Meanwhile, the feminine's like, hey, what happened? Right, so let me check out the Jack of Wands as a page, Summer with Earth of Fire, and this Feminine Energy as a page. Mm, I kind of feel like she might be a knight, though. I think she's a knight. The Knight of... pentacles. So she's Leo and Virgo with fire of earth. Okay, that makes sense. She's looking towards the masculine energy going down in flames and she's like, I'm just kind of chugging like chugging along here at you know, um like the tortoise, right? Slow and steady wins the race. And the masculine's like like a fire like his pants are on fire, uh, running to to win so hard that he trips and falls down the rabbit hole and is like, what the hell? Like, what is this place? <clears throat> and again, I get this idea of um, Russian headlong. I don't want to say again because it's not like you were there when I did the other reading. I don't even know what it was from, but anyway, I've gotten rushing headlong from Queen a few times as a an earworm lately. Um, there ain't no stopping something, something. Just keep rocking out of control. Um, I want to see. Had what was that? The knight. So as a 12, that's a 3 energy, which, and because the feminine energy is upright, I'm not getting hangman energy from her. But I do see 11, and I see this as, these 10, 10 as, what am I trying to say? 20 and, el and 11. Right? 2 and 11 is 13. So I can see how the masculine is going into this transformation cycle. It's like you, you broke the fourth wall and now you're out of the... It's like in Cool World. Like, like um, Noids do not have sex with doodles. very much um, entering into a different reality through this uh, transformative stage. But he's at 11 and then the feminine here is at 12. She's trying to get to that empress energy but she's just kind of chunking along here like la 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 la. Oh, okay. I just realized that I hummed that to the tune of Tell Me Something Good. Tell me something good. Ah! It's a disco song, I think. 
All right, so let's see what's what uh, what's this overall situation is entailing here. I also see twenty and eleven as thirty one, which breaks down to a four, which is inverted emperor energy, right? So there's this idea that he's that there's the masculine and the feminine energies are trying to be at the emperor empress level, but they both still have a little way a ways to go in their journey. Bring it down. Oh, this was inverted, I remember, because both of those were upside down. So we have wealth inverted. That's ten of discs, ten pentacles. Something's gone very poorly here. And... Oh, it is Mercury in Virgo. Okay. So I do see this as half of the 20. I see 11. I see possibly 11. Because these can be ones. So it's like there's a reason why things have gone poorly with the masculine and the feminine in the past. They're both trying to level up to that emperor empress energy and in their journey in their own way there's been a clash where whenever they communicate with each other it's ungrounded and nothing grows in this garden it's like dry bones but we do have a completion here right the cycle is coming to an end because it's it's like double time 11 11 now I noticed that I've got 11s here, which is a twin flame number, and I do have cards from my twin flame deck, but don't let that fool you, because it might not be a romantic relationship. It could just be, um, it could be any kind of feminine and masculine energies coming together. There's some, um, uh, I don't want to say to describe this in a way that's not romantic relationship linked. It's like your creative side is flourishing slowly, but your analytical side is confused. You can't do the math. You're like, I don't understand it. It's like apples and uh, gyroscopes over here. I don't get it. You know, which is why you've struggled so hard in the past in the material world. You know, that's another example of masculine and feminine energies applied to these cards i mean the the easiest way to think about it is you know you met someone who's like your perfect match and everything's gone like shit and you don't know why and instead of you know being at war with each other you need to be able to like understand the enemy and, and be able to have some kind of detente but until you get to empress emperor level you won't be able to see the bigger picture and understand what what's ha been happening on the battlefield thus far okay so let's get on from aries and go to the next victim here we have pisces i'm gonna get some water and hopefully not forget my time on the thing so we have water and we have i think that's neptune you know why i have us yeah that's neptune which rules that passes, oh, and it's a water sign. So thirsty. Uh oh, I've been screwed. No, 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 don't make noise. Hang on. Oh, thank God. I have a video compiling, and if I don't have my computer running, it's going to screw up. Thank God I was thirsty. It took me three tries to get my all of the segments for my uh, relationship inquiry thing to 
combine and it took like hours and hours because I had to keep restarting it because it would chop off like the last 20 minutes or the last two minutes and I'm like come on okay communication breakdown oh look at that the the advice card is a heart card this might be a love reading all right Pisces especially because we've got this work your light oracle and an angel deck card here Okay, Pisces. Ten of Wands inverted. Well, that's a good sign. Look at that. We got both fishies here. Somebody's inner feminine and the regular feminine. We have a duality. Ten of Wands. Saturn in Sagittarius, which is ruled by Jupiter. And don't dim to fit in. How are you dimming your light in order to fit in? Now that came out inverted, so I think we might have confusion or a delay here. And then we have renewal. Archangel Jeremiel. Review and evaluate a favorable assessment of the facts. Times Time to move in a new direction. Ooh, there's a song. What's that group called? I think it's Beth Ditto is the the singer. It's like uh, move in a, in a in the right direction. I don't remember what her band is called. But that's usually judgment. But here it's renewal. So it's like you've been overloading yourself, draining yourself energetically by trying to be like everyone else. But you're being called to to really understand that you don't have to be other than yourself and changing so that you can be yourself will allow you to fulfill your life purpose and look at this we have a doubling effect and it's in wands which is fire which is illumination which is strength and uh, crap, what was I going to say? Self-confidence. Right. It's like, um, there's a grim fairy tale, the coat of many colors, and the this princess, for some reason, has run away, and she's pretending to be a scullery maid. And to try to make herself look less beautiful, she's covered herself in all kinds of dirt and, and everything and put on this uh, shaggy looking coat that's made out of uh, like a fur from every animal in the world. And she looks like some, uh, you know, lumpy creature in the woods when they found her. Um, and she was trying to fit in, but she was discovered to be this like glowing radiant uh, princess eventually at the end of the story and um, was able to become her true self and get married to the prince and all that shit. So, um, so it not, might not be quite so fairy tale, but it's like, you know, when when you grow up and you live your life, people sort of pigeonhole you into a certain way. And there isn't a lot of room for personal growth or to really express yourself how, how you want to be. You know, like... It's like a glow up. Alright, so... This here is like a self-nurturing kind of a card. Now here I see it as the feminine um, 
giving support to a masculine energy that's very beat down. But I also feel like if if you're in a Ten of Wands energy, that's a very masculine card, but we have two feminines on here. Like the feminine energy has been totally cut out so that the masculine energy is in full throttle control. There's no creativity, it's survival. It's got to do what you got to do. And he's this can burn you out and what you need to do is to be yourself and like a, open your heart to yourself and uh, treat yourself with great care and realize that you don't have to be like strong and functional and like by the numbers uh, analytical every single moment of every day you can be creative you can be emotional you can uh, you know let yourself do some self-care instead of everybody thinking you're just some piece of crap who's not worth anything you're like I am worth anything I'm going to nurture myself and, and say oh it's all right to be me all right and then the card says embrace through each other you find the missing pieces and I think it's interesting that it says pieces and it's for Pisces find the missing Pisces what is that intuition that you've let go of because you were afraid to put your toes in the water. Now it could be entering a relationship with somebody else. Just saying, you know, I've been the man in my life the whole time. I really want somebody else. I'm not, you know, I'm not the, uh, I don't want to sound too traditional here, but it's like, I'm not the head of the household kind of material. I'm the, you know, I'm not the leader of the, the band I'm the key grip or something you know like I just want to be over here and and in my corner and read my book and you know be and by being yourself it says a favorable assessment of the facts time to move in a new direction which could be by meeting somebody else but I think it's very clear that this has a lot to do with um, self-healing and like self-unity of different energies that the the piece that's missing is your true self and and if you look at your true self as something that's not separate from you that you won't be divided from yourself any longer now Pisces having two fishes does uh, indicate a duality there so I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing that that this could be talking about a single individual you know like you versus your inner child all right so let's go on to Aquarius I don't want to say it, but my brain's making me. This is the dawning of the age of Aquarius. So we have Uranus and air. Did you know that the planet Uranus emits gaseous anomalies? Oh, or it is a gas planet. Giant gas planet. Oh, it's green and it's tilted sideways and it has rings around it. The... And for some reason, unbeknownst to me, I associate Aquarius also with Mercury, and we've got a lot of Mercury energy right now with Gemini flapping around all over the place and Mercury about to go retrograde. So let's see what's going on with Aquarius. Oh, a tree. And the advice card. Still waters run deep. So I should point out that this water symbol um, goes back to ancient Egypt. This little squiggly lines that I made isn't totally accurate, but it has to do also with electric current. Aquarius being an air sign, we have water in the air. That's like Wi-Fi. Okay.
can cut through it like a knife, like emotional content, tension, like a big ribbon cutting with the scissors. Okay, so this is from my Twin Flame Pinnacle deck, and we have... Okay, so technically this is inverted because of the way it's drawn, but I'm going to say that it's not because the, the, the little DM thing that I wrote on there is upright. I don't know why I wrote some of them the other way, but I mean, they're, I did, so it is. Um, so I'm going to say that we have the Nine of Swords upright, or potential, like, um, Schrodinger's Nine of Swords, let's put it that way, with masculine energy trying to come out on top. We have Mars in Gemini, and like I said, I do sense mercurial energy, which rules Gemini. Mars energy, Mars rules Aries. But I was saying during the Aries section that it's not always combative. Aries has to do with psychology and... what was the other one? Ah. Oh. There's another word that begins with P. It's like observation, knowing thy enemy, um, tactics, um, negotiation, stuff like that. It's not just fight, fight, fight. You know, like the art of war is like a huge book on, on, I haven't read it, but it's it's one of those things. It's like it's not just fighty fighty all the time. It's like sitting down, thinking about it, reading, observing how people react, understanding primal instincts and the fight or flight reflex. Okay, so that we have Mars energy in Gemini, and this idea of it could go one way or the other. I just heard Blondie one way or another. I'm gonna find ya. Oh, get ya, get ya, get ya. The Emperor in reverse, that's four, so I see a death cycle here. Transformation, also going back to a four, four swords, wake up call, and then we have Aries energy with Mars again. Struggling against those inner demons. And a four, again, the four of pentacles uh, inverted, and this is the world is not enough. Like, ain't nobody got time for that, but upside down, it's like, I got a little time. So four pentacles. Huh. Mercury in Taurus. So, oh, I just heard of sending out an SOS. That's uh, the Manhattan transfer. And interesting because we have a transfer, f transformation. Somebody save me. Send me a love line, rescue me. Those are those lyrics. That's a disco song, too kind of, um, Nightmares by the Sea. I don't remember the lyrics, but that's a Jeff Buckley song. It's like I'm holding on to the nightmares. But I want to wake up. Eat. Trying to find the strength to work your way out of this uh, recurring nightmare. So it's like you come out of it, you think you're fine, and then it happens again, it knocks you off your pedestal. Let's see what the advice is. I see this is also inverted, but let's see what's going on here. Nine of fire. Okay. So it's like, put it down. I know this card says other stuff for this deck, but I'm not going to read that. So we have masculine enter masculine suit, masculine suit, and then we have a feminine suit saying... Okay, I know I don't need this. Like, creative thinking is like, oh, this freaking nightmare again. God damn it, what the hell? And this is like... Okay, I think I can let go of this. Like, 
Like I'm trying to find creative ways to work around this problem. Nine of Wands, the moon in Sagittarius. So we do have this idea of, I also see nine, nine, that's 18, that's the moon again. And then we have nine and four, that's 13, nine and four, that's 13. And this came out inverted. moon okay cancerian energy so there is an emotional aspect to it it needs need to go deeper into resolving a problem that won't go away tired of of waiting for this nightmare to end and getting to a point of wanting to like flip the table like the little like a uh, little uh char like Aussie character guy flipping the table it was like this this game of Monopoly sucks and they just like flip the whole board over with that a little bit of uh imbalanced Emperor Ares energy it's like this game sucks um, but I, th I think um, this coming in as an advice card is saying you need to let go of some kind of deep emotional wound that keeps causing this nightmare to crop up. It might not even be something like conscious because again I said Schrodinger's Nine of Swords right it's either like a dream or a nightmare it's like constantly flipping back and forth like things that trigger you and you don't know why and then you end up having nightmares and it knocks you out of balance of, of being like totally like chilled and mature and everything right like it causes like it almost makes you throw a tantrum when you'd otherwise be like just like chilled out and and reasonable so there's some kind of emotional blockage that really needs to be let go of and that will cause the transformation all right so let's get into the next one Uh, Capricorn, Earth, ruled by Saturn. Una, two, a tree, and and then wife card. Okay. So Capricorn, three of Pentacles inverted, and we have this sort of mirror world here. Now we are in a lot of Gemini energy, and I'm getting duality in a lot of cards. So it could be inner feminine and exterior feminine energy. And anyway, it's three of pentacles inverted. So there's some kind of a foundational issue or a change of plans or something like that. A blessing of the air, number two. Okay. Some sort of like mental clarity. And also I'm getting high priestess energy. It's like your your perception has been clouded like you're so involved in what you wanted to do that you weren't thinking if it was the right thing to do and I see two two here right two women that's two and women that's the high priestess and we have three and five here that's a pivot that's change it's uh altering the vector setting setting a new course and we have the seven of swords here right it's like a shady deal and I do also get like two and five in seven being related to that five that movement but I can also see this as as hanged man energy of uh, 
having been not sure where to go or like what exactly you're doing or like left swinging in the breeze like you're trying to work with somebody else and they they fucked right off with everything that you are trying to build up left you holding the bag confused totally destroyed everything that you thought was going to happen kind of energy but I do see 3-7 uh, as a completing of something as well that is the moon is it the moon yeah it's the moon in Aquarius so does also come in as something as um Oh, that's right, we're not in Aquarius is reading anymore. The moon in Aquarius. Like, darkened communication. Mixed signals as well. Mixed signals leading to confusion. Your dreams kind of dashed a little bit, and you're having to come to a place of really following your intuition more than trying to follow what you thought you wanted. All right, let's see what this advice is. Ha <laughs> ha, six of wands. Victory is nine. Jupiter in Leo. Three and six. Thirteen, so that's transformation. This is like really stepping up communication with your higher self. Rapid, rapid succession. I also see this idea of like nine pentacles of like instead of having working with other people having it come out like crap, you're working on your own. It could be in a business or in terms of relationships. Yeah, I think it's looking pretty good. Just uh, for Capricorn, stay true to your inner knowing, right? We have this be here, like, hey, listen. I'm going to, to, uh, like, your higher self is is um, is like pollinating the fruits of your future, kind of. Mm. Sagittarius. I'm gonna get some water though. The fire sign. Oh. Ruled by Jupiter. Also known as Zeus, the hurler of thunderbolts. And the white scare. Okay. So, from my twin flame deck, I've got the Ace of Fire here, which works pretty good, matchy matchy. But we have the feminine inverted. But the card is upright, because I don't know why I marked those cards like that, but I did. So we have feminine energy kind of off her feet. Mm. This is about a love relationship. I feel like Sagittarius is in the, being fire element is... Uh, expressing a masculine uh, mode and sweeping a feminine energy off their feet with this full-on like <laughs> big dick energy of like passion and excitement <laughs> oh man oh two of cups but it's inverted 
fell in love with an alien. That's by the Kelly family. They're an obscure European, at least to Americans, they're an obscure European band. Very good. Fell in love with an alien. Two of Cups inverted. Venus and Cancer. So we're not well grounded here. But we have a lot of fire energy. A blessing to ease loneliness and bring companionship. <laughs> the 40, 40, that's a new beginning and a good foundation. But I don't understand why the Two of Cups is inverted unless it's because it's in, um, in Cancer and we have uh, that like moon energy clouding it, right? So we have the sun and the moon, we'd have sort of an eclipse going on. In, in a way that maybe the masculine is eclipsing the feminine with her energy and they're not well balanced right now even though they both want to be together because they don't want to be lonely like they um like he, I'm getting a sense of twin flames because it's like you stuck together like those little magnetic salt and pepper shakers but the it's like you're coming in so hot that the feminine is like ow I I need some ointment for that burn. <clears throat> Again, it doesn't have to be twin flame. I'm just saying that it would explain it a lot easier. It's like extremely... <sighs> so it's like extremely passionate where one person is sort of dominating the other with their energy. Like the feminine might not be able to, to have emotional clarity because she's so wrapped up by this like expressive like like brilliance of the masculine so let's see what's going on with this advice card here three of fire abundance things look very good have patience at this time make long-term plans so three of fire is the sun in aries which is ruled by mars so we're getting to this martian energy Martian, Martian, Martian. Now I do see two and one as being the three here, right? Like things are hot. And three and four here, Empress, Emperor, right? And we're getting into the chariot with the seven combined. So I think what's what's happening here with Sagittarius is... Um, now again, like I said... Um, if you are seeing any of these other clips here, I had this uh, indication today that Aries energy is not always, like Mars slash Aries energy is not always to be considered as war and combat and it has to do with strategy and psychology and uh, like technique um, negotiations and like understanding primal instincts and the fight or flight instinct and, and things of that nature why why people do what they do and how to uh, predict people's movements and things like that and I also just heard the scene is seen it's a goddamn arms race <laughs> it's a little bit of other Martian energy um so the three of the three of wands is that you know i can see clearly in the future like my sh my ships are coming in you know i've been waiting for that package for three weeks and it said it was nearby and it didn't come in yet like well it the today is finally the delivery day here right um and it's and it does say patience so I also see this this uh, like emotional trouble like my heart is in trouble what's going on it's like um, having a little patience in your negotiations in your communication with each other is going to give you that happy future and again this a blessing to ease loneliness and bring companionship it's not i mean this character isn't 
you know, running through the trees, like, on fire, like, oh my god, my pants are so hot, I, like, I need this person. It's quiet reflection, it's getting into nature and grounding and, and getting a little bit of, okay, what, well, like, what do I really need? Like, let's, let's cool off for a second and talk about it so we can figure out what we're doing. Not just, like, rush in there like, oh my god, yay! You know, it's, it's having that, like, maturity, uh, and, uh, ability to, to strategize a little bit. Now, Sagittarius, um, is the archer, which is, uh, centaur. And I think in one of the readings I did since yesterday, because I keep forgetting where I am, I was talking about the centaur, um, and I keep getting confused whether Chiron or Charon is the guy in the boat or the centaur. But it's either Charon or Chiron, who's the centaur, was the guy that decided you know, I'm not going to be like the other centaurs and just have bacchanals all the time and, you know, bang anything that moves. I'm going to, you know, learn crafts and techniques and uh, be be an educated person, like a, a man's man, man about town kind of guy. And the Sagittarius energy here is telling me that that kind of... Uh, you know, maturity out of base, like, fire at first sight, gotta have it, gimme gimme energy is putting into this more reflective mode of like, oh my god, yes, I, I want to do this, this is my future, instead of, you know, like, head over heels and love clouded and completely overshadowed and burnt to a crisp. And I think it's a lot more stable and obviously there's going to be grounding involved in a better foundation all right so let's get into scorpio the darkness the darkness of night pluto in the dark pluto energy scorpio three and an advice card all right so we've got a couple of norman cards here so i might have to check out the book so it's brand new to me this week and i've never used lenormand before so you have the snake inverted so the snake is supposed to be snappy snappy bitey bitey danger danger noodle film at 11. Um, i do see infinity i see eight we have queen of wands energy which is Pisces and Aries but we have inversion now the Queen of Wands inverted is like hella pissed off usually like I will smite thee but the snake inverted might not be so snappy. So I'll have to check the book and see what's going on with that. Um, I have the Ace of Water. It says, falling in love or the resurgence of a relationship, spiritual growth and an enhanced intuition, a new home. So we do see Pisces and Aries here. Pisces is one of the psychic intuition water cards right next to this other water. Water, water everywhere, but not a drop to spare. I'm also seeing 13. I'm seeing 13 transformation. I see um, a one and a one, so we might have 11. We might have some timing going on. I see an eight here, sort of stuck in some kind of emotional quagmire. All right, what do we got? Imrama, but it's inverted. Look at that, it's all watery. A wading pool. Where are you being called to journey to? But it came out inverted, which just to me means like a delay or some confusion, right? It says, where are you being called to journey to? If you're confused, you're like, dude, I don't know. 
I don't know which train I'm taking out of this boat station here. Where's my ship taking me? <sighs> so Ace of Water is the Fall. And here we have the Fall. But let me see what's going on with the snake here. Give me the snake. Snake is turned away from the Ace of Cups. So it might be, end up being thirsty. Snake, 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 snake. It says, watch out for me because I'm always hiding. You can never trust or believe me. I am cheating, deceiving, and will betray you in a heartbeat. Be careful where you are treading. My things will surely have you dreading. It says, watch out for a superficial person, one who is prone to being malicious... Bitchy best friend, meaning you harm. Duplicitous behavior, two-faced. Just skimming this. Okay. So, that's if it's upright, though. But it's inverted. I almost see, um, I just heard like Journey to the Bottom of the Sea and uh, like 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. So what I'm seeing for the Scorpio energy with this fiery queen water of fire It's like biting the hand that feeds you, kind of. Like a feminine energy who is extremely dis mistrusting of others, who wants to be. All right, my camera o overheated. I had to wait for it to chill out for a while. All right, so I was saying... I hope I didn't just mess up the focus. Okay, so I was saying this snake inverted with that queen of wands coming away from this ace of cups. It's like a feminine energy who wants to be able to... Uh, like engage in a fulfilling way with other people but keeps oscillating back and forth um, between this reaching out energy and this attacking energy all right so let's see what this advice card is it's from the Lenormand also we have the birch which is like a birch branches uh, and it's almost like a broom but it's like to hit people with or a whip braided from the finer branches and it's kind of a malignant card even though it's number 11 we have the jack of wands which could be the knight or the page but it's on the 11 card and I'm feeling like it's probably the page, but let me check out the energies here. Yeah, it's it's going to be the Knight, Scorpio, and Sagittarius with fire and fire. So let me read the birch, because this is like my first time really using this deck here. <sighs> Be warned of high temper, I bring conflict and strife. You will find me in competitions because I work with repetition. Arguments and quarrels are my patent, but I am not always a villain. I can be found in the gym or in a lusty bed on a whim. Okay, so this queen here, she's not always the villain, right? Now with this cup here, I don't necessarily feel like 
like it's a lot of sex going on, even though there's Scorpio's the sexy card. But we do have Scorpionic energy here with Sagittarius, so it's like there's a vector. There, there's a direction that this is moving in. When the birch comes, frenzy will be whipped up, creating discord, and a person will be quick to anger. Trouble, strife, disharmony, conflict, argument, stress. In its most positive sense, we have here a card calling us to bring our forces and attention together to get focused, to get all our ducks in a row. I thought there was going to be another paragraph, but that was it. Okay. Let me just look at this for a minute because I'm having a hard time with this reading. Also because I got way late for like an hour and a half in the middle of it. Okay. It says spiritual growth and enhanced intuition, a new home. It says where are you being called to journey to? Let's just go back and read that paragraph again. Bring your forces and attention together, get focused, and bring all your ducks in a row. Is this like anger and dissatisfaction and being ready to strike because of past abuses in some sense? And in some sense, a lack of self-trust, just um, a lot of rage. And here, it's like, it's like calling you into deep water. Out, of, it's like, it's, it, it's like that um, out of the frying pan into the fire. But here, it's like out of the fire into the water. You know, like pouring the the pouring the water over yourself with like steam rising off it it's like um cooling your jets in order to i almost feel like this in this are very similar i just heard taking it to the streets and it's weird because it's almost like Like, Scorpio is the fiery water sign, in my opinion. And it's like... It's like being called home out of a distant land. Like, you've been... You've been playing with fire over here, but you're not, uh... You're not, uh... You're not made of coal. You're... You're made of water, and it's like the the fire here. It's like um. It's like if if you boil water, you turn it to steam, and that's that like. Live steam will burn you. It'll bite you like this snake, but it's like you have to. It gets. It's like getting to a boiling point in your life where something needs to be changed. It's like you need to go back where into the depths of your soul and remember who you are. No, it's like somehow in the past people that were on fire just burned to death. They didn't know they could stop, drop, and roll or pour water on themselves. 
they wouldn't jump in the water because only witches knew how to swim. So they would just burn to death. But it's, it's like, um... This is like the scorpion's tail. Right? Ready to sting? This whole operation is foobar. It's not like a bort, though, but it's like, um... like finding a juicier apple. It's like, um... It's like the difference between Zeus throwing thunderbolts and his brother Hades ruling the dead. It's like your whole operation needs to move into a different palette, kind of. And it's also the sense that it, you can't fight fire with fire if you want to really break into a somewhere. You start with a trickle of water and it widens into the Grand Canyon eventually. And this looks a lot like a canyon. It's like changing your tactic to solve a problem that keeps uh, coming back to bite you. Yeah, I'm satisfied with that now. Alright. So we will go to Libra. Air sign. Ruled by Venus. Alright. So what we've got here. This gentleness, this sort of bird of paradise essence here. And we start out with playfulness. Laughter is the best therapy. Have some fun together. And remember, love is the greatest healer. So that's coming in under the auspices of Venus, right? And we have Libra. So we have balance, right? All work and no play. But now we need to get back into play. And we also have this sense of balance between masculine and feminine as well. And this bird here is just kind of like, la la la. Mm -mm. Six of Swords, so that's sailing to clearer waters. It's like riding away from the bullshit. Energy. Mercury in Aquarius. So we have a shift in the way things are understood or communicated. And have the world share the land. I guess who? And it says, have you been aware up here? That's one of the lyrics. Oh, I'm trying to remember what it is, okay. It's like, something like, maybe I'll be there to take your hand, maybe I'll be there to share the land, and then the something something and we all live together. It's something like that. Uh, so share the land. And, and again, it's the world. Right? You can open yourself up to the world if you're not taking things so seriously. Have some fun together. That's sharing. Six and three, that's nine. Get the hermit energy. Three is the empress, which is... Venus again. It's like traveling, it's like world travel and having a good time, right? I'm enjoying going different places and having fun and usually with someone else, with other people. So let's see what this card is. So the the wrap-up advice card here is the Ace of Swords, and there's a feminine figure in the middle, and it's DF, so that's feminine energy. I also see 48 here, so that's Strength and the Emperor. I mean, it's a 48-card deck, I think that's why it says that. But, uh, 
is kind of interesting to note, but I also see 12 and the 21 is being related. It's like the truth of the matter. And then I do see seven swords here, but I see it as the chariot. Ace of swords is winter and air. Like everything is snow white and pure and clear. And I really do sense again that Empress energy because I'm seeing this as the, the like the ultimate truth of feminine energy. It has to do with nurturing uh, growth and well-being, like playing nice with with your friends all over the place. The honesty and a sense of fun is the best way to interact with everybody around the ultimate peace and happiness okay so it's mirroring virgo earth ruled by mercury not a tree and an afterword <clears throat> All right, so we're starting out with this card. It, it, to me, it's like it's supposed to be the sun, but it looks like the moon. It's like a pearl. It's like something beautiful created out of grit and dirt and pressure and this like peace coming in of like freshness and lightness. You can breathe easy. So let's see what it says. You may not always understand why certain things happen. However, there is always a higher purpose to the events in your life. Through turmoil, a blessing will soon be revealed. So like I said, it's like a pearl, grit and pressure. And then we have this expansion and uh, like an opening, you, like your personal energy opens like a great shining bird, the peace. Peace and understanding. Yeah, this one first. Okay. So the Eight of Swords in reverse. And actually, we want to see this in reverse, right? That's that breaking free, the bird flying out of the cage. Eight of Swords. Jupiter in Gemini. It's like... Like, this time your choice was a lucky one. Right? Your decision to break free of your own mental prison. I could stay in this prison, or I could just be like, I'm done thinking that. So the eight. We have the Queen of Earth inverted. Alright. Eight of Swords. Jupiter and Gemini, and then the Queen of Earth. Sagittarius and Cancer with water and earth. Sagittarius and Capricorn. Sagittarius is also Jupiter. And then Capricorn is Saturn. Now, usually a queen inverted would be, seem like something bad, but I almost see it's like breaking free from rising up from the earth. Usually I see this as ungrounded, but I see it as, as underground prison and then f flying free. This is a death cycle can be one or a 13. I have nine, I have nine swords. So part of this underground is like the nightmares, um, breaking free of that, but also um, four would be half of this. So I see it as like a, a ramping up of the energy of like, no, I'm not gonna be down here in in this dark place anymore. I'm, I've done all my 
crunching of the pearl grit and I'm ready to come out. So let's see what this card is. So this is Judgment. It's a song called Wisdom by Johnny Lang. It's on an album called Signs. Um, I mean, I haven't listened to that in a while. But I mean, this the essence of the song Wisdom is that um, it's like you when you're younger and stuff's happening to you, you're just like you don't have any wisdom yet. It's not. It's it's like it's not being jaded, but it's being like more sure of yourself because you've gone through all kinds of crap. And I think the judgment card with this dove here really goes to say that you're 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 you you have completed breaking through these these challenges and barriers like you've graduated you've ascended you're becoming your true soul self your life's purpose is aligning because you've gained the wisdom of having been through something you wouldn't have learned it if somebody just told you about it right so we have virgo here we have the earth and again we also have this air essence because it's uh mercury is also ruling gemini which is something that's in play right now and i did the same one of these was gemini Eight of Swords, Jupiter and Gemini, yeah. So that's that background energy. It's like the dark side of Virgo is is a uh, trap behind those bars. Okay. So we have Leo, Fire Sign ruled by the Sun, Cat. I mean Kitty Cat. And a dance, 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 and a dance, dance, dance. Two, three cards, and head voice card. What we got here? Yeah. The Page of Swords Inverted. So the song on here is Crypt of the Necrodancer, OST Zone 1, Level 2. It's from a video game. And the point of the game is to... It's made by the same people that make The Binding of Isaac. and Or at least the guy that does the music is the same guy. Um, so this character on the card I think is actually a girl, which is fine because Paige is often princess. And the point is to move the character in time with the music, keep up the beat. So for this, it's this card especially is, has to do with being in a rhythm. Now this page, I'm pretty sure it came out inverted, so I get when I'm not paying attention. Soars winter and earth of air. Alright, so we might get back to that. It's either a 1 or an 11. So it could have to do with timing, has to do with some kind of stalled new beginning, trying to do something new, but you're not in the rhythm, you're out of alignment, and there's like a, you're frozen in time, there's a blockage of some sort. We have five of discs inverted, which is worry in the Thoth deck. Mercury and Taurus. Taurus ruled by Venus, which is also ruling Libra. I was, just, I was gonna say I sent some devil energy, but I see this Venus energy here with the pentagram. Five of discs were inverted, so that it would indicate a release from some kind of uh, devilish bondage. And usually, it's the five of pentacles would be feeling left out in the cold, but here it's like anxiety like anxiety lifting maybe because of a block frozen in time 
Like, I'm so anxious. I keep getting cock blocked. I can't move forward. I see a 1 here or 11, and then I see 5 here. So I do see 1, 5, possibly devil energy. I see the... In, I see I can see a six of swords inverted like unable to move forward six pentacles trying to to uh, get balance within yourself but I do also see um, the devil and the tower so it, it, break the chain ancestral patterns healing rewriting the future it came out inverted as well. Um, I almost feel like because these are all upside down, it's like being in a mirror world. And if, like if it's if something in front of you is frozen, it's like ice, it's like glass, it's like a mirror. Reflections frozen in time. There's Jupiter right there. So it might have some Jupiter or Sagittarius energy. Now this came out inverted, so it's like... I'm having a hard time breaking free of anxiety because of something that's going on here. There's something blocking my path. But it's like, um, <sighs> it's like what you, you're, it's like the basilisk being frozen in stone by its own reflection. That you're so concerned about like the appearances of what you're doing that you're unable to proceed forward. And you need to break free from that. So let me see what what this is. Align your life, what's not aligned, or what needs to change. Okay, that's what I was going to say. Because this has to do with rhythm and alignment. But I really get the sense that Leo is actually holding Leo back here. It's not really like a no from somebody else. Uh, I see the Page of Swords. Um like a very like trying to figure out what your truths are like like who am I what is my energy flow how do I do this like double dutch thing with myself and it's just like a lot of anxiety trying to figure out who you are in the world and where you fit in I was like, what was it? Like a page. Oh, I was gonna say in the the Syrian Star Seed Tarot, the pages are called Seekers. It's like trying to find yourself, getting into a pattern with yourself of not just saying like. Like, ew, I can't stand how I look in the mirror, and then being like, well, I guess I don't care about myself today, I need to be somebody else to fit in better. And it's it's like you really need to break away from what everyone else thinks and is attached to and tells you, and just align with yourself. And look at even this, it's a broken mirror. It's like, break that chain, break that mirror that looks back at you and tells you a bunch of bullshit. So Leo has some inner work to do. What is your truth? You need to ground yourself. Communicate with yourself in a way that's kinder and less uh, scalding, I should say. Cut yourself a little slack. There's like no emotional content here except for like anxiety, really. It's like... On the in, on the outside, it might be like raw or lion, but on the inside, it's like meow. Because of this this anxiety of like I don't know who I'm supposed to be. But you're you're not gonna get there if you're trying to be who everyone else is. So, 
Leo is the sun. They're the one who shines out their own light. You can't be the sun if you're trying to be Jupiter or if you're trying to be Planet X or if you're trying to be, you know, Halley's Comet. You need to be you and not worry about what the hell everyone else thinks the sun is. You know, they can put on some goddamn sunblock. All right, I'm going to change the battery now with another interruption before I do the last one of Cancer. So we'll be back in a second. All right, so we are moving on to Cancer. Water sign ruled by the moon. We've got a Lenormand advice card. <clears throat> Blessing for unity where there was once division, number 37. So I see 10 here. I see 3, that's the Empress. I see 7, that's the Chariot. But I see the moon on here as well. So, oh, and then the Empress too, she's holding a bunny. Goddess of the Moon. I also see the High Priestess because she's related to the Moon as well. Mm. But it's like if you want to, your chariot to roll, you need to have unity. You can't have your horses going in opposite directions. Alright. What's this? Seven of Cups, sideways, challenge, position. So there's another seven. And of course, the chariot is ruled by Cancer. <clears throat> Seven of Cups. Water, water everywhere. Venus in Scorpio. Now, Venus rules the Empress. Scorpio is ruled by Pluto. Venus also rules Taurus and Libra. So we have grounding, we have a need for grounding, we have a need for balance, we have a need for deep emotional reflection. Seven of Cups again. This time with two masculines on it, an inner one and an exterior one. It looks like he was holding an animal, but it's just his cuff. bigger on the inside right he's got plaid in there so it's just your heart's bigger on the inside now this people say a lot of the time is options I see it as distractions and height and um, that like shop 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 buy 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 read this watch that look at this um, like things that are viral, like viral internet stuff, the popular toy that people kill each other for at Black Friday, stuff like that. Mass hysteria, consumerism, there we go, that's the word I wanted. That's what I usually see the Seven of Cups as. I see it as diversions, distractions, uh like whack-a-mole which 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 cup has the real thing in it and I just heard the rotten fruit heard the rotten fruit <laughs> um yeah and the fact that there's two of them there and one of them sideways it's like unity where there was once division right we want balance but one of the wheels is jammed the wrong way so I very much see it as, uh, and even the way that I stack the cards here, it's like Cancer trying to drive their chariot. Let's see what this Lenormand card is. That's the wrap up here. Uh, uh, the book, Ten of Pentacles. Mercury and Virgo. So we have air and earth, sense of grounding. 
But here I see with the book, it's like underground information. Right, because the book is inverted. That means it's like you're not... It, you would think it would mean not, like you're not learning something, but I think this is... Especially with a water sign and there was a Scorpio in there somewhere that it has to do with underground information. Let me read the book. Oh, I opened right to it. How about that? On page 42, the answer to everything. The book of knowledge, the book of secrets. So secrets has to do with the moon, which is Cancer is ruled by the moon, even though the, can the moon card is Pisces, which is the sister symbol. Um, so we have secrets, m moon, secretions. The book of knowledge, the book of secrets, what I house is educational and private. I may be your project or your research and sometimes your studies in journals. Watch out for the cards around me because with the sun you will see right through me. I am hidden, I am unknown, but occasional knowledge I might learn. The book is a vehicle for the very imagination itself. The book of the reverie promise. oh, the gilded reverie. Promises tales of great mystery within its pages. Okay. So I feel like this has to do with reconciling opposing forces in your life like learning how to balance your own energies now typically in terms of the chariot it's masculine and feminine energies but it could be really anything light dark cold hot you know what is bullshit and what is true and mostly what's learning what's what you can learn if you dig deep enough is how to reconcile these parts of yourself. And I think the the digging deep really has to do more with emotionally than with anything you can learn, but there's a still a way to, to open up yourself to yourself. Um, you could do like going online and looking up uh, certain spiritually woo kind of videos that might trigger something. Um, I just wanna, I feel like there's something I'm missing here. Let me look at these cards a little bit more. Pentacles. Seven of Cups. Venus and Scorpio. So it's two sevens of cups. One would be Venus and one would be Libra. Emotional balance. Like one of your chariot wheels is soggy. I also see five, which would be five of cups, which would be that like unbreak my heart kind of energy, but it also is a pivot because I see 14 with temperance. 10 and 10, that's 20, that's judgment. One and 10 is like 11, the timing, eight, breaking free or not breaking free. 17, the star energy. Yeah, I mean, I feel like there isn't really much more here except for dealing with some kind of emotional imbalance that has to do with um, overly, like, um, turning the tables on the garbage that society is shoving down your throat that you think you need that's emotionally unsettling, that doesn't give you happiness. It divides you from yourself and only when you say like no I don't need all that crap I only need this one suit over here 
that's hiding all that information and these guys got brochures all up in his little coat that you need to figure out what fulfills you emotionally that um, will give you emotional abundance and that ability to move forward in your life. Okay, I think that sure she did it. All right, so that was the astrological check-ins, um, bi-weekly astrological check-ins. So keep um, keep on with my channel, so you can see those when I add them every fortnight. Oh, that's even worse. Come on. Come on. You know you weren't here. Okay. So, if you want to subscribe to my channel, you'll be able to see all my playlists and new videos when they pop up. So you'll be able to see this, these astrological check-in readings, which is basically pick a pile or multiple piles, or just sit and watch the whole thing like it's a movie. Um, and... Uh, share, like, subscribe, comment, uh, feel free to hit that tip jar, um, energy exchange, and so on. You can throw dollars at me. Uh, that's paypal.me slash catthaminion. I also have Cash App and Venmo. Um, if you want to see the complete list of readings that I have, and how much they cost. They start at $9 and most of them are in the $30 to $40 range. You can see that in the description box of my infomercial video which is linked below this one or you can email me that cat came back at camp at gmail.com and I'll get you that list. I have actual art items in my catalog. I've made to order things like this jolly foam flower here. I have stuffed animals that are made to order, a couple other things. I have actual items, I have a few drawings that are listed, and when those sell I'll add some more to the catalog. I have chapbook packs, which is like essentially like a little oracle card pile. It's got art and poetry. It's like basically like this, but it's a mystery pack of little art goodies. Um, and those are listed in the catalog. It's there are five dollars, ten dollars, and twenty dollars, depending on how many you're getting. And that and the links for my coloring books, my poetry book, merch and prints are all in the same description box again, or you can email me and I'll send you that whole deal. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, you can follow my Facebook art page. And uh, again, stay tuned and we'll be posting more, more astrological sign readings in a couple of weeks. And we'll see you then. Bye. Bye now, all the people. Bye.